Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. We begin in the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, in Ahmad Hu and Hestaina Hu and Astaghfir Hu, and Audu Billah, Min Shururi and Fusina, Min Sayati Amalina, Mayadi Hilahu Fala Mudilla, who may you lil who Fala Hadiella, where I shadow a la ilaha illa law, Wahdahu la Shadikalahu, where I shadow Anna Muhammad and Abduhu or Sulu, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. All praises due to Allah from whom we seek help and forgiveness. We seek refuge with Allah from the evil of our own souls and from those of our bad deeds. Whomsoever Allah guides, will never be led astray and whomsoever Allah leaves astray no one can guide I bear witness that there is no God but Allah the one who has no partner and I bear witness that Muhammad peace and blessings of Allah be upon him is his servant and messenger يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتون إلا وأنتم مسلمون أو ye who believe be mindful be mindful of Allah in the way that Allah deserves be mindful of Allah in the way that Allah deserves and do not die except in a state of full submission and remembrance of Allah سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم رب شرح لي صدري وسل لي أمري وحل الأقطة من لساني يفقه قولي السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته again it's جمعة مبارك to all of you the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi once said that everything has a polish everything that is on this earth has a polish that needs cleansing it has a polish and the polish for the hearts is the remembrance of Allah and he also said that the one who remembers their Lord and the one who does not is like the one who is living and the one who is dead. So oftentimes we hear about the you know either something that's tragic or the loss of a life uh, or something catastrophic, and we oftentimes say just out of uh, out of conditioning, you know, inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun that to Allah we belong and to Allah we return. Yet how often do we think about the significance of what we are saying, particularly from a spiritual standpoint, or how the remembrance of Allah plays into that? Think about ourselves, us humans here per se. Think of ourselves as on a journey, on one long winding road, but the starting point of that road and the ending point of that journey is with Allah both. And it is the remembrance of Allah that will help us get to where we belong, specifically through the GPS system that we have and the GPS model that we know as Islam. As Allah says in the Quran in Surah Fajr, Ya ayyuhan nafs al mutma'inna irji ila rabbik, that Allah commands us return. Return, O soul, to uh, your Lord. Please, well pleased to your Lord and return. But we've got to realize, as we've mentioned before, that we can't return to a place unless we've been there before. And so the remembrance of Allah is also a means to help us get back to where we came from as well as to our destination. So the importance of the remembrance of Allah today, inshallah, as we'll discuss, it's such that the entire foundation of the religion of Islam is built upon it. And without not just the concept of the belief in Allah, but in the remembering of Allah through not just worship and faith alone, but also through action, we have we discovered this means that remembrance of Allah is something dynamic. It's not just something static. And to think about how we as Muslims, it's you know, when we think about Islam, when we think that we're Muslims and whatnot, what does that mean? You know, what what exactly does it entail? So, you know, oftentimes we may think theologically that, oh, you know, I'm a Muslim because I believe that there is God and then I'll go and I'll live my life as is. Or Islam means this or Islam means that. And so that's what we'll associate with it. But what we'll talk about today is how intrinsic the remembrance and consciousness of Allah is to this faith that without it, the faith is uh, fairly hollowed out and, and without much substance. If there is no remembrance of Allah, if there's no active remembrance of the one who gave this faith and the active creating of this faith and all this world around us, then there really is no religion to stand upon in a sense. And so just think about that practically that in every action that we do, anything that we begin, any task we begin, we might sit in the car, we start the car or any prayer that we start, whatever it may be, we begin with the Bismillah. We begin with invoking in the name of Allah whether intentionally or by condition, because our parents have conditioned us to say it. Uh, yet what is the Bismillah? Just practically, what is the Bismillah? What is stating or starting in the name of Allah? It is a fundamental aspect of remembering Allah. 
in anything that you do, that you begin something, but before you even begin it, you take Allah's name. You remember uh, Allah's name before you even start it in every single action. So in that aspect, Allah is with you in a dynamic form. And the Prophet ﷺ had taught that any initiative or any task that is undertaken without involving the name of Allah is a task that is uh, that is uh, registered as incomplete. So thinking about that for our purposes, we might get in that car, drive from home to work, drive back, and we're all said and done, but we haven't said Bismillah. We may have started that plate of food and you know started it, ended it, finished it. We may have started a task, started it and completed it, but we may not have said the Bismillah. We know that for our purposes and in the, the spiritual sense, as, as we understand our deeds and our accounts to be, that for our worldly purposes, that task task might be finished. But in the eternal book, in the eternal records, in the spaces where it counts the most in the hereafter, that's a task considered incomplete. So just thinking about how intrinsic is it that the remembrance of Allah is not just something confined to the prayer mat. It's not just something confined to the reading of the Quran. It's not just something confined to the rituals of Islam. It's confined, it's, it's, it's expansive across all of our actions. And so thinking about it in that aspect. So the remembrance of Allah is such that it does not just, it's not just something that we do in the beginning of anything, but it's something that in this aspect is something that ties everything together for us, that it makes a matter from complete, from incomplete to complete just by its utterance. So inshallah today we'll use the basic framework and foundation of Islam using the five pillars as an example. We'll see how important the remembrance of Allah is such that it underlies and is the center of each of these pillars and as a result our entire faith. So just to begin, Islam itself was built upon a foundation of remembrance just by a fundamental fact it was built upon a foundation of remembrance in the belief of one God. From the very first moment of revelation of Surah Al-Alaq, the uh, human humanity is challenged to remember their Lord. It's challenged to remember their Lord and to read in the name of their Lord who created them and whom the Quran says is closer to them than their own jugular vein. Just think about that for a second, that even think about those who are closest to you. Just take a moment to think about those who you would identify as closest to you in your life. And thinking about whether they're your parents, your spouses, children, siblings, whoever they might be, that even those who are closest to you, even those who you remember and love the most, they have a distance, an inherent distance between you, that just a physical standpoint, there is a some kind of a distance. So, you know, you aren't one with that person, that you, there is a, a barrier that exists in, in various different ways. But thinking about how the Quran articulates it, that Allah is closer to you than your jugular vein, which is inside you, that from not just a logistical, but a spiritual standpoint, Allah has no distance from you, that Allah is always near, that when the when when one calls upon Allah, that Allah says that I am near. And when we think about revelation in and of itself, we think about not just its uh, eruption into the world, but we think about how it came about and its recitation, its active engagement. It, in fact, is a remembrance of Allah. You begin each recitation with the Bismillah, but you recite the very speech of Allah. You recite the very words that Allah sent down to the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ, that this is an act of remembrance. And so Apart from the foundation, the apparatus of Islam is built upon uh, and it's upheld by that concept of remembrance of Allah. So as we see in something as fundamental in the pillars and even in the name of Islam itself. So before we jump into the pillars, the, when we def uh, talking about the name of Islam, when we define Islam, we see that it doesn't simply mean peace when, as, as you know, we may have been conditioned to say, uh, especially in the wake of 9-11, or simply mean submission or uh, anything of that sort, that it's just either peace or submission in this way, but it's something that connotates a full surrendering. It connotates a full submission through which tranquility and peace then come, that there's not a mutual exclusivity to these two things, but one leads to another. And, and uh, ultimately an absence of chaos that comes forth and that submission that trank that submission that comes or that submission that's given it's given to none other than Allah and so in order to have submission we have to have something to submit to to which we know from the testimony of our, of our faith the shahada which we uh, which we began with today that none is worthy of this except Allah 
except God. And in the name of Islam, we have the first reminder. And additionally, from the submission that is given, we also are reminded that the peace that we associate with Islam, the tranquility, the, um, the, the absence of chaos that comes, that also comes from the source and the provider of peace, as-salam, that comes from Allah, who is uh, above all and above everything, the provider and nourisher and sustainer and, uh, of peace. And so we, we in the submission, not only do we remember Allah, but in what is received, in the gifts that are received, in the state that is received, we also remember Allah. So holistically with Islam in the name of it itself, we have that reminder. As Allah says in the Quran and Surah Baqarah, remember me, I will remember you. So thinking about that when we say Islam, when we say we're Muslims, the ones who have submitted or the ones who have believed, the ones who have accepted this and the ones who have um, you know, turned themselves into their Lord and, and submitted themselves to their Lord, how do we think about it now in the concept of how this label itself, how this name itself, how these titles that we give ourselves, how these are active reminders for us of Allah's role in our life. So in looking at the five pillars from the name of Islam itself, we go to the five pillars that uh, uphold the apparatus of Islam altogether and, and the pillars that are uh, of, of the belief and of the believers that uh, in them we have the signs that are also not just a structure for what this religion looks like from a constructive standpoint, but also uh, from the aspect of what is the concrete mix that builds each of these pillars up, what sustains these pillars, what upholds them. And from what we see today, it is that remembrance of Allah that holds them each. So the first one that we have, the shahada or the declaration of faith, that there's the testifying that there is no God but God of Allah, that the Prophet Sallallahu is his messenger. It's an expression not only remembering Allah grammatically, but it's also a spiritual and theological expression and utterance. The declaration and faith of a Muslim is grounded, is, is begun with them having the recognition uh, in that what makes them Muslim in the first place is that they have chosen to remember that God is the only God, that Allah is the only God, that is uh, Allah who is without a partner, that uh, to actively then remember that Allah uh, is also the one who sent the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, is his messenger. So thinking about when someone comes to Islam, when someone takes the shahada, and this is something that uh, we see especially with uh, not, not that I've seen not just you know with new converts, but especially in the work that we do in the prison. That when people take the shahada, um, what 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 is meant by that? It's not just a statement that one says, but in that moment, in starting your new life, in a sense, in turning the page and starting a new chapter. If you're coming from one space and you're like, I want to become a Muslim, I'm gonna take the shahada. The very first thing that you do as a Muslim, the very first act that you do to intentionally enter the faith is just a, an act of remembrance. It's an act of remembering that. Uh, uh, there is no God but Allah, and the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is his messenger. It's an active act of remembrance, and so uh, the 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 actual pillar itself, the declaration of faith itself, is if we take the remembrance of Allah out of it, it's it's a hollow statement that has no meaning. It has a it has no weight to it. But in the declaration, you also have the remembrance. So the the dhikr of Allah, the remembrance of Allah is 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 what holds it together and gives it that significance there, but that, that constructs it. Apart from the shahada in the first pillar, we have the second pillar of salah. And uh, in the prayer, Allah says that very clearly in Surah Taha that indeed I am Allah. There is no God before me. And so worship me and establish prayer for my remembrance. The act of salah is itself rooted in spiritually and literally in the remembrance of Allah. So think also of when in Surah Jum'ah, Allah, Allah says, Faso ala dhikrillah, that with respect to Jum'ah, that strive towards the remembrance of Allah, race towards the remembrance of Allah, and that so is the same, comes from the same root of sa'i that we associate with the running between Safa and Marwa, that our mother Hajr would 
would do um, in the, uh, you know, when, when looking for water uh, for her child, that, you know, racing like she was in between in the desert between these two mountains, seeking nourishment for her hunger and thirst, because the remembrance of Allah is such that it is a spiritual nourishment for the spiritual deserts that we occupy and in which we reside. So thinking about not just how Allah says very clearly, establish prayer for my remembrance, that what you say in prayer can sometimes when we're just taught it and we, we just recite it, it's just out, out of condition and rhythm and it's just, you know, different sounds and words that we use and we just start to say it. But thinking about what was the purpose of it to establish prayer for my remembrance and what does the remembrance of Allah bring? Remembrance of Allah brings uh, the calmness of the hearts and verily in the uh, remembrance of Allah do hearts find rest as we see um, in Surah Rat. And so when we think of about even furthermore, faso ala dhikrillah, that run, race to the remembrance of Allah. This isn't just something that uh, is is just, you know, uh, it exists and it's like, you know, you just, if you want it, you can have it. If you, if you don't want it, you know, you won't not benefit from it. So just uh, take it or leave it. But it's something that Allah tells us strive for it because there's such benefit in remembering in, in that act of remembrance, because that act of remembrance is not static, it is dynamic. When you remember Allah, you then are uh, brought into doing even better things that, uh, as we see with these pillars, the remembrance of Allah brings about further action. So just because uh, remembrance of Allah isn't just something that should just be assumed to just be like, if I sit in the corner and I just remember Allah, that's what remembrance of Allah is. No, remembering Allah is also remembering that the creation around you is Allah's, that the world around you is Allah's, and that we are stewards of Allah and uh, we're stewards of this world from Allah that how do we uh, how, how do we uh, take and, and do the right things and and do give give upon the rights to the creation around us as well as ourselves and how do we turn this back to our Lord when the time comes that it gives us a heightened sense of awareness for responsibility to take care of ourselves to take care of the world around us and so it's an active part of engagement so remembrance of Allah is not a static thing Apart from the salah, we have the zakah, the charity, as we've just mentioned here that uh, it's mentioned in the Quran timelessly from uh, along the salah. And in a sense, it's another manifestation, as is stated in Surah Baqarah, keep up the prayer and pay the prescribed alms, whatever you good, good you store up for yourselves, you will find it with Allah, that Allah sees everything that you do, that spend in the way of Allah, that give this charity in the way of Allah. And, and we know from the Prophet's example, that even smiling is a form of charity if we're not able to pay the zakah or we're not able to give charity um, because of financial restrictions or something that we're not we just don't have the capacity to that even being a good person being a person of good character is the uh is is a supplement for that charity in that aspect and why is uh what 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 is the significance of charity that if we're just to give charity just to give it away there's you know it it, it has a limited benefit there but if we give that charity out of that remembrance of Allah that uh, Allah Allah has given us something. Allah has given us an amana. Allah has given us uh, a blessing, has given us a trust with whatever we've been given. How do we use that benefit? And we see as well um, in, in the Quran, how it mentions that you will be asked upon that day about all your blessings, about the things that you were given. And so why would the act of charity not be something that makes us remember Allah or something ingrained in Allah? Because we could just give what we'd like, but does it prompt us to remember Allah? It's the difference in the charitable giving within Islam is that we give it knowing that what we're giving is not really ours. It's it's for it's Allah's and it, it, and we're giving it for the sake of Allah to the other creation uh, of Allah in order to help. And so it's it's an act of helping us remember as well. Fasting in the in the psalm and the fasting, uh, the fourth pillar. Uh, with respect to fasting in Ramadan, uh, in which uh, you we see in the Quran, it says that, O oh, ye who believe, kutiba alaykum siyama kama kutiba ala ladhina min qablikum la'allakum tattakun, that fasting is prescribed for you. It's prescribed for you as it was prescribed for those before you, that you may not lose weight, that you may not, uh, you know, lower your blood pressure, or that you may balance your diet. But first and foremost, that you may develop God consciousness. It goes without saying here that the remembrance of Allah, that without having genuine remembrance of Allah, without recognizing Allah in this moment, in this in this fasting space, that without that, 
uh, it's just a act of starvation in a sense. It is just a uh, a very corporeal loss that you are taking on. But when you are fasting, when you are intentionally fasting and you begin your fast with the name of Allah and you begin it uh, for the purpose of developing God consciousness and for the purpose of remembering Allah, it will you will see how much more of a nourishment you have. And we see this during Ramadan uh, when we get into the swing of our fasting, especially in, in spaces like uh, places like Texas where it's a hot summer during uh, Ramadan at this time. And we see that as we go into uh, the fast, we, we might, you know, go eight hours, nine hours, 10 hours, 12 hours, 13 hours, and not really start to feel hungry. You know, we may be going through our work routine and people around us are like, how are you even functioning without any morsel of food? And we, we're just like, no, we're just doing it. But then think about how we try to fast outside of Ramadan. It is, you know, with it's like, you know, just pulling, uh, you know, tooth and hair, literally just to like, just, just trying to uh, fast a normal fast in Ramadan because it's excruciating. We're not in that habit, but thinking about what does that when, when our uh, corporeal body is emptied of its physical nourishment, that the remembrance of Allah gives us that spiritual nourishment to help us keep going. And the last pillar of Islam, the Hajj, is uh, what we can see as a manifested act of remembrance by the Quran, uh, by uh, by our father Ibrahim salam and carried out by millions up to this day. That as the Quran reminds us to remember Allah in action, but uh, as we see in our talbiya, as we see in our talbiya, that we arrive to the Kaaba, we arrive to the home of Allah, and saying La Baik Allahumma La Baik, that we're at your service, Allah. Here I am. Here I am at your service. We are here. We are here, and here I am. Why would we say that if we didn't think that this was uh, a place of significance? That this wasn't uh, who who is Allah to this place? That we remember that the place and the ground that we stand. This is uh, the sacred marks and the sacred precincts that Allah has designated. And Surah Al Baqarah uh, it states that and when you have completed your rites of Hajj, remember Allah like your previous, uh, re like your remembrance of your fathers, or with greater remembrance that. Uh, like the remembrance of your fathers or with greater remembrance. So try to do better. Try to remember more. There's benefit in that remembrance. And among the person is, is also there who says that, uh, you know, our Lord give us in this world and they will have no share in the hereafter that you have this aspect that is uh, that, that that is what's the purpose of your remembrance is your the person who had said our Lord give us in this world did remember their Lord. But what was the objective of their remembrance? It was very worldly. So our remembrance of Allah should also be that that transcends this world. It transcends it. Uh, and we, we uh, have that remembrance to put us above the desires or the needs of this world uh, to enable us to be of among those who uh, are there in the hereafter, counted in the hereafter, but are enabled to do even better things in this world. But we don't just remember Allah for the sake of this world. So if we need something, as uh, as we had a khutbah last week, that uh, it's not just transactional. We don't just remember Allah for the sake of our immediate needs or whatnot. We build a relationship with Allah. We establish that connection with Allah. And so our remembrance of Allah is not grounded in uh, the if I get uh, if I get to marry somebody that I want to, or I get a certain prize that I want to, or I do certain things I want to, or I get this job that I want to, but it's grounded in something more holistic. It's grounded in something more uh, uh, more foundational than something like that. That's a, a kind of a cheap transaction per se. And so apart from our foundation, uh, we, we see in closing here, inshallah, that our faith is sustained and it's blossomed by the act of remembering Allah and becoming people of reason and true understanding that when we remember uh, Allah standing, sitting and lying down, we become those people of reason, true understanding and of consciousness that uh, as mentioned in Surah Al Imran. So uh, the remembrance of Allah not just uh, you know brings us a spiritual benefit, it sharpens us, it makes us more mindful. So when you are remembering Allah, when you're cognizant of Allah, uh, lying down, sitting, standing, you are someone who's more aware of their environment. You're someone who's more mindful of the things that come out of your mouth, the things that you say, the actions that you do. So you become a more mindful person and you become sharper in this aspect. You would become someone who uh, is above head and shoulders, uh, above others in the room who may not be mindful of Allah. And so thinking about uh, just an example we had shared in the prison 
uh, last week that uh, Malcolm X, you know, was someone who was not educated, was someone who uh, talked about to, to their education being his education being within the prison, that he, all he learned, he wasn't even literate until uh, he got into prison and, you know, copied the dictionary and did all these things and, and got to that state. But this was a person who had no formal education, who after his prison release, after his acceptance of Islam and uh, learning his, you know, getting to learn um, doing his education in the prison was someone who was then uh, sitting table to table with people at Oxford, people at Harvard, people at universities, scholars, and people who had PhDs and doctorates and everything like that, imams, scholars, all these people nowadays look back to him to try and get uh, different gems of wisdom and advice. They're thinking, what does the remembrance of Allah do to you even when the world deems that you have nothing? Uh, the remembrance of Allah can still make you that person head and shoulders above the rest when you are genuine in it. And so uh, we, we ask in this concluding moment that as uh, Aisha radiallahu anha said that our, our Prophet used to be someone who remembered Allah in all moments, that we too become people who remember Allah at all moments, that what makes us as what makes us Muslims, what makes us uh, as followers of Islam is not just our different outfits, it's not just our beards, it's not just you know our different doctrines or theologies. What makes us true Muslims and what makes Islam uh, our religion and what makes this faith in itself unique is that we remember Allah at all moments and that consciously and subconsciously and that in that remembrance of Allah, when we truly enable it, when we truly participate in it, when we truly make ourselves cognizant and mindful of Allah, where we're remembering Allah, lying, sitting down, standing up, that our hearts will truly find rest. So we ask Allah to guide us to the right path, the path of whom those Allah has bestowed his pleasure and not those who have incurred Allah's displeasure and to make every aspect of our lives a opportunity for us to not just remember Allah, but a chance to become closer to Allah and to enable us to leave this Juma better than we came into it and to leave this world better than we came into it. اللهم صل على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما صليت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما باركت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد عباد الله رحمكم الله ان الله يعمر بالعدل والاحسان وايتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعيذكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله يذكركم وادعوه يستجب لكم ولا ذكر الله اكبر O oh, oh, servants of Allah, may Allah be merciful to you. Verily, Allah commands you to act with justice and confer benefits upon each other and to do good to one another as one does to one's kindred and forbids evil which pertains to your own selves and evils which affects others and prohibits unlawful rebellion. He warns you against being unmindful. He warns you against being unmindful. Remember Allah. He will remember you too. Call upon Allah and he'll make a response to your call. And verily, divine remembrance is the highest virtue. Rabbana taqabal minna inna ka anta samiul alim. Our Lord, accept this from us. Indeed, you are the all-hearing, all-knowing. Ameen. Jazakallah khair. Again, I wish you a blessed Jummah. Uh, and inshallah, till next time, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.